Welcome to September's Legal Challenge. Today's problem is insert interval. Given a set of non-overlapping intervals, insert a new interval into the intervals and merge if necessary. Basically, we want our final output to also be non-overlapping. You may assume the intervals were sorted, so that's good. If we had intervals 1, 3, 6, 9, and we had a new interval 2, 5, we're actually going to update this first interval with 5 since they overlap, right? So here's kind of going to be our approach. One of the first things we need to realize is our initial out input is already non-overlapping. So what we're going to do is create a separate array or output list and append all the current intervals where the starting point is less than the starting point of the new intervals. So say that our uh, new interval started somewhere here. We're going to insert these two first. And all we care about is that starting point, right? And the reason for that is we know that these are non-overlapping. We just don't know if our new interval overlaps yet. Um, so say that we've inserted these two, um, and we can see here that our new interval is non-overlapping because the end is less than the starting for the new interval, right? So here we would just insert this new interval here, and then we would go on, insert the rest of our intervals, and we'd actually end up updating our um, current interval, we'll merge these two and update the end with this one's end. And then we would add this last overlapping one, or at least this last interval. Uh, so if you just kind of think about that, like there's three things that could be possibly happen here. We might insert this new interval, or we might update our current interval's endpoint with this, this new interval. We might update this one. Or it's possible that we don't. Uh, it might be engulfed in this current interval, so we keep the old max like this. Um, so those are the three things that could possibly happen. All right, so basically we're going to use this approach of three stages. We're going to first um, find the point or the index where our new interval exists. So find that midpoint, might not be in the middle, but just call it mid, uh, where this new interval belongs, All right? Once we do that, we're going to either insert or merge our new interval. And finally, at the third stage, we're going to insert or merge all the rest of the intervals. Because we have no idea if this new interval's end is going to engulf the rest of the intervals, if it's, if it's on its own, if it's going to update the, the current last interval, or, or whatever. So um, this part's going to be a little bit different than what we do with here. So let me first initialize an output going to be an empty list. I'm going to say for start end in intervals, I'm going to check, hey, is the starting less than our new interval start? And if it is, we're going to just insert it into our output. Just have a list of the start and end. Now, otherwise, once we find that the starting point is greater or equal to our new interval start, we're going to break. And what we'll do is have a in integer, integer set at zero, and we're just going to update that every single time we insert. That way we know at which point that we want to restart our loop in our intervals. So this one's going to be stored, and once it breaks, or it might not, um, we'll find where we want to merge or insert the rest of the intervals. All right, so stage two, now we want to insert or merge our new intervals, right? So how do we do that? We want to check. All right, well, if output, the last interval end on our output, if that's less than our new interval start, then we're going to append this new interval to our output. Now, keep in mind, it's possible that we don't even have an output yet. It's possible that our new interval just preceded all the new intervals before. So if that happens, uh, we'll have to also insert our new intervals. So we'll say if not output or uh, the output's last intervals end is less than our new intervals start do that. Otherwise, we want to update the endpoint for, for the last interval, right? So what we'll do is say, all right, update this with not just the new intervals end. Uh, it might it's possible that's engulfed, so one of these two, the max between these two, in fact. This one or this one. All right, so now we've inserted or merged our new interval, right? Now we just need to go through the rest. We'll say for starting end in intervals, and luckily we have our mid index that we can use to know where we begin. 
we'll say the same sort of thing if the output end is what if it's less than the start then we're going to insert it otherwise we want to update the last indexes between whatever this is and here we won't be new interval it'd be the end right for every single interval we check and that would be it. We just return the output now. So let me make sure I made no typos here. Okay, it looks like it's working, right? Let's go submit that. Up, oh, got the wrong answer. Hmm. X between three, six, nine. I apologize, I'm not sure why I messed up here. But one that's less than we append. Otherwise we get the max between these two. Oh okay, that's my fault. It's not not that. It's that one, right? Yep, so there we go. I accidentally updated with the start, not the end. All right, so that's it. Uh, I've seen this problem before. In fact, I have a video on it for the Blind Created 75 Challenge. Um, I try to do it remembering what I remembered. So it's possible that this is actually not the most optimal solution. Um, my first video might have been better, in fact. Uh, but I'm very tired. Um, I'm just going to end it here. So thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.